The state of California has set a very ambitious goal. They want all of us to do our part in reducing the amount of garbage that we send to our landfills by 75% within the next four years. This is City Hall in Focus. I'm Gloria Cohn. And with me to talk about solid waste and what the city of San Carlos is doing about it is Jay Walter, the director of Public Works. Jay, what is solid waste? Well, solid waste is pretty much anything that you get rid of at your home or business. Paper, glass, plastic, um, organic material, it's just something that you don't want anymore that has to be disposed of. And why is it so important for us to reduce the amount in our landfills? Well, one of the things about landfills is that they take up a lot of space. Um, from an environmental standpoint, they generate greenhouse gases which are harmful to the atmosphere. And they really take up room that is um, becoming more and more valuable for other uses. So along the peninsula, it's important that we not have landfill space that's devoted to that. And you are providing for all of your residents three bins, a black one, a blue one, a green one. That's right. And what do you hope to achieve with those? Well, so from a diversion standpoint, what we want to do is keep as much as possible from going to the landfill as garbage. So the blue bin is for uh, glass, plastics, and other recyclable material, cardboard, uh, that we can then sell and, and get revenue for after it's been disposed of. The green waste is simply that, the yard clippings and food waste that come that can also be used from uh, an organic standpoint. It can be um, kind of made into other products, which are good. And so as little as possible that can go into the black bin the best, because then that's what is actually uh, going to the landfill. So who we want you, it smaller. Sorry, who do you sell that refuse to? Uh, there's a bunch of, of commodity markets for it. Sometimes it's the agriculture industry, uh, especially the vintners. They use the compost material that's generated to um, help their crops grow better. Uh, we also use it for um, uh, creating more usable methane gas that can be used for powering cogeneration facilities. Are the residents doing all that they can to contribute? Residents in San Carlos have been doing a great job. We're probably, from a residential side, close to the 75% uh, diversion rate. And one of the things that we have to do more work on in our town is the commercial users. We're not quite there with them. And also some of the multifamily and condominium complex locations that uh, are not quite the same. But single family residential doing great. How do you educate the businesses and commercial properties about participating more? Well, we work in partnership with uh, Recology, our collection contractor, and our waste management agency uh, by doing business visits, sending out information uh, that go along with the monthly bills, having information available that can um, show them ways that they can help divert the, the material from the landfill better, um, help their staff understand the things that they can be doing as well. It's a, kind of an ongoing effort. You talked about the apartment complexes and the condominium complexes and as challenges. What are those challenges? Well, it's challenging, especially from um, the, the green bin standpoint, that is the organic waste. Um, residents can dispose of their food waste in those green bins, but in the apartment complexes and condo complexes, sometimes having to collect all that material in one place could be quite messy and, and really challenging for that complex to be able to deal with it. And so we've ha we haven't quite cracked that one yet, but um, Recology and, our, and others are working on that to try to make it possible because we think that's a really big component of diversion. The solid waste bill that you send out a separate bill, right? Is that right? That's right. And how are those rates determined? The rates are determined um, based on the cost that we have for both the collection and disposal of the material. There's a component that we get back, that is when the material that's uh, recycled is sold, we get some revenue from that. Um, but basically, we have to structure the rates on what it costs us to provide the service. That's a component of Proposition 218, which was passed a number of years ago, to help um, make sure that agencies are charging rates that are appropriate for the service provided. And do you negotiate a certain length of that contract with them? We negotiated a 10-year contract with our current provider, and we're about halfway through that right now, and we've had some really good customer feedback and uh, satisfaction with the job that they're doing. And they're a very highly professional group that has lots of experience in waste management, and so we are getting really good ideas from them and good strategies. 
can rate hikes occur within that 10 year, or we have five years left on the contract, can rate hikes occur then? You know, yes they can. And um, basically they are the, the sort of inflationary cost increases that occur. There are, are um, uh, they are allowed a certain percentage to increase um, in the, per contract, but some things like fuel cost and disposal costs and other kinds of things like that can sometimes change. So we have to be uh, flexible in that way. And yes, rates can increase year to year. Yeah, because the fuel costs are always fluctuating. We can never predict those. That's right. Recology offers, offers other services too. What are those? Right. Some really good services, especially when you think about it from a, um, a home standpoint. You always have batteries around that you can't get rid of anymore. You can't throw them in the garbage can and other things. If it's uh, prescription pharmaceutical drugs, if it's old paint and varnishes and things like that, then you, all you need to do is call Recology. They'll schedule a pickup. And they'll come out and they'll grab that stuff from you free of charge. Free of charge. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's something that is uh, as many times as you want. The other thing you can do is you can schedule a big item pickup twice a year free of charge to get rid of that old refrigerator or that couch that you no longer want instead of leaving it alongside the street as sometimes happens. Those are great services and very convenient considering that we don't have that much landfill space left. What are some of the success stories? And before I have you answer that, I know you had mentioned vintners early and I grabbed some information about how they are thrilled with the composting materials, that it's helping their soil, the moisture in their soil, and for the overall vineyard health. So that's really good news. And what are the other successes and then how do you measure them? Well, one of the things we measure success on as it relates to the example you just gave is when we continue to have a demand for that compost material. So as long as there's a demand, we can generate it and it can be provided then to all those different places. The vintners will tell other vintners, they'll tell other agricultural interests and we'll, have, we'll continue to have a real strong market. One of the other good things is from the disposal of that organic material, as I mentioned before, it generates a methane gas. That methane gas can actually be used to power equipment and vehicles. And in fact, the, uh, the treatment facility that we have for wastewater is partnering with our trash collection agency mm -hmm. to take some of that food waste and actually turn it into methane gas, which then they can use creating a fill station for uh, CNG vehicles or powering the generators and things that they have at the, at the plant itself. Jay, we know the vintners are benefiting from the compost materials. What are some of the other benefits? Well, for those weekend gardeners, there's an opportunity to be able to pick up some mulch to help your garden vegetables and other plants by going out to our Shoreway facility. The other thing is overall, this, uh, the program, uh, the solid waste program helps us achieve goals in the Climate Action Plan. Ultimately, we need to reduce greenhouse gases and the diversion of waste from landfills is a huge, huge element of that. So it's really important that we do that. Now, for those people that want to learn more about recycling, the Shoreway facility has regular tours that school children in our community take advantage of oftentimes, and parents could learn a thing or two by going along with the kids. So it's a really great uh, place to go see and learn about what's happening and how we're helping our planet. It sounds like that San Carlos is well on its way to achieving that 75% reduction. I'd say we are, especially on the residential side, and we just need a little more help and encouragement on the business side to get them to participate. And I think we need to figure out a couple of things with our large multifamily complexes, which more and more we're starting to see built around San Carlos. So that's an element that I think we need to do more outreach on and provide some good strategies for them to be able to help us out. And we'll look for those in the future. And if you want more information about the ways that we can reduce our landfill, you can visit the City of San Carlos's website. I'm Gloria Cohn. This is City Hall in Focus.